So you will be able to um, see the clip envelope controls if you press this little E button here, right next to the sample button. Shows up there. Two choosers at the top. They, they are called choosers, by the way. That's not just me deciding to call them choosers. Live do refer to them as choosers. The top one um, lets you decide whether you want to modulate a parameter which Ableton Live deems to be part of the clip or a mixer parameter. If you were to put, uh, what track are we on here? I think we're on this track number two. If I was to put another audio effect on there, if I just put something like EQ8 and drop that onto that track, and then we go back to the clip, EQ8 shows up there as well. So this is really, really powerful. If I, if I had 25 uh, devices on that track, all 25 devices would show up in that chooser there. If I choose EQ8, that's all of the parameters that you can modulate using clip envelopes and EQ8. It's basically everything. All right. Um, we're going to simplify things, though. I'm just going to show you uh, things that you can modulate via the clip and then the mixer options as well. So uh, let's start with clip, and we'll have a look at what we can do. The first thing in the the first parameter in the clip, the chooser for parameters via a clip is volume. So we can modulate the volume of the clip using a clip envelope. Just remind ourselves what this clip sounds like. Sounds like that. Um, you can decide to either draw in your automation using the cursor. So this is sort of similar to the, the way you do it in Pro Tools. For those of you that aren't familiar with Ableton Live Automation yet, it's a little bit fiddly when you first start to do it, but you will get used to it. So in order to put a breakpoint in there, just click once. It should tell you the value there, 100%. And if I click and drag straight away, I can start to create an automation shape or some automation information. Um, when it starts to get a little bit fiddly is when you go in to edit this stuff. Try and pay attention to things that are being highlighted blue when you move the cursor over. You notice that that entire thing goes blue there. Now, if the entire line is blue, if I click and drag now, it's going to move everything. Yeah, people. This is where people often start to get a little bit peeved. If you just want to move one individual breakpoint, you have to position the cursor so that it just it just highlights that individual breakpoint. See how the two are highlighted there? Now, what I tend to do is if it won't stop highlighting both of them, I just double click and then I just put a new one in. It's the quickest way to do it. And the, the easiest way to draw something in like this um, is to click, keep your finger pressed down and then drag, like so. If you click to put it in once and then go back to it, you'll find that it'll probably highlight all three. See how it's doing there? So when I move, I'm moving that entire shape. So click, keep your finger on, and do that. That All of that said, oh, by the way, if you want to clear the envelope, if you right-click and press Clear Envelope, just gets rid of it all straight away. That's a handy one to know. That all said, um, I'm going to use the pencil tool here anyway. I'll hit P, B sorry, to go over the pencil tool, um, and then I can draw shapes in depending on the grid resolution. Uh, if I right-click, I can change my grid resolution. So I'll just leave it on eight, eight notes or eighth notes. Hit play and see what happens. So that was really, really quick. I just drew in some sort of random shape. I didn't really think about it as I was doing it. And that's pretty nice if we hear that with the uh, that kick drum. Okay, so that's nice, um, but that's just volume. But let's look at what else we can do. This button allows us to either link or unlink the clip modulation or the clip envelope from something. Someone have a guess. What do you think that is either linked or unlinked to? Not quite tempo. No. The grid is a close, I guess, yeah. Is it the selection of the clip that you've got and the duration of it? It's the duration, yeah. So you are either linking or unlinking the clip modulation 
from the duration of the clip. Now, the duration of our clip is a little bit of an alternative one, isn't it? It's one bar and one beat long at the minute. Because this is a 4-4 clip, and uh, I think we created a 5-4 rhythm before, so we decided to just extend that loop to encompass the first beat of bar 2. So our clip is one bar and one beat long. So let's just remind ourselves how it sounds. So we've got a rhythmic effect made by modulating the volume. All right, so let's unlink it from the length of the clip. A few things happen. First of all, this button goes orange, but also notice that the loop brace at the top's gone orange. Yeah. So that tells you now that if I was to extend this loop brace out to say, let's just have three bars. I'll move this end marker as well. I'll hit play and let's just see what happens. Okay. Hmm. So the volume stayed at 100% all the way along here, didn't it? Essentially what we've done is, now the particulars of this are, are not really important, because we've got a 5-4 uh, audio loop, but then we've got a, a two-bar section of automation. Try not to let that tie your head in knots. Essentially, the most important thing to remember is the period of t musical time over which we are modulating the parameter is different from the length of the audio loop. So let's just put a few other changes in there and see what happens. Yes, Lou? Um, I know you've done your like, steps there where it's like obviously every eight bar it changes, but can you do that with like a... Of course you can, yeah. So if I right click here, might be a better way of showing it actually. I'm just going to clear the envelope to start again. Let's simplify this. Um, let's make our loop... I'll tell you what, I'm going to get rid of that kick drum. We'll just listen to this. So that's just one bar now, yeah? It's simpler. All right, and let's just put in, um, I hit B there, by the way, to change from pencil to the cursor. I'm going to put one automation breakpoint in there, and then I'm going to change that to zero. So. Volume goes from 100% to 0% over one bar. Okay, let's unlink that clip envelope automation from the length, the duration of the audio, and rather than having one bar, let's have two. Okay, so remember it's the orange loop brace and the orange start and end markers that we're interested in now because we're dealing with unlinked clip envelope automation, that's gone orange. I'm just gonna move that breakpoint to there, which is the end of the second bar, start of the third. Now let's have a listen. Okay, so as you can probably hear, the audio loop, the, the audio is looping, it starts again there, but we're only halfway through our volume change, yeah? because we've unlinked it from the length of the original audio. Stuart, does that make sense? Excellent. Okay, um, that's a pretty basic use of it there, but it starts to get a little bit more interesting um, if, you, if you start to use alternative durations and interest, because you start to get interesting polyrhythms essentially. What we're doing here is polyrhythm. We're just not doing it in the normal way that we're used to in year one in music theory in terms of layering um, instruments over each other in different time signatures. What we're doing here is we've got an audio, an audio clip which is of a certain time signature and then we're gonna, and then we've got some modulation happening in a different time signature which is, can be kind of interesting. So if I right click, yeah this is already on 16s um, we've already seen that you can draw the automation in if you want. Um, I tend to just do this at first, just to see how it sounds.
Now, at the minute, what we've got is we've got a 5-4 loop, but we've got a 4-4 four, four clip. So why don't we change this to be a 5-4 clip? This makes a little bit more sense now because we can conf we can draw our automation out in 5-4. We can then unlink it from the duration of the audio, make it two bars of unlinked automation. So the audio loops exactly the same, but the automation is different the second time. <laughs> 